Hey, Francisco with the Dev Life. In this video, I'm going to show you how to generate an SSH key so you can use it with GitHub or Bitbucket. In this example, we're going to use Bitbucket to generate a NADA key. I will also be showing you how to install a Git client, but if you don't want to watch the client installation, you can use the timestamps below to skip that and get to the part that you want to watch. All right, let's get to it. All right, so the first thing we are going to do is install SmartGit, which is my Git client of choice. So let's go ahead and search for that. Let's go ahead and download the Windows version. By the way, this tutorial is being done for a Windows machine. So just keep that in mind because some of the commands are slightly different. If you are on a Mac, you take that in consideration because not everything might work. Let's go ahead and install the Git client. Let's select run. Uh, I will be fast forwarding through most of this, uh, but for the most part, I'm using the default option. So I'm just clicking next, next um, to get through all the prompts. Now that the setup finished, let's go ahead and open SmartGit. Okay, so let's go ahead and pin it to the taskbar for now and let's close it. All right, the next thing we need to get is we need to install Git. And the reason why we're installing this is so we can get the Git bash on this machine. Again, for the purposes of this video to not end up with the long video, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through all of this. This is pretty much what we're interested in more than anything else, the Git bash. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave all the default options and click next all the way through. It is asking me to restart my computer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now that the computer restarted, let's go ahead and open the Git bash. Go ahead and press the Windows key on your keyboard and if you don't see git bash uh, on the on the menu here, all you got to do is just start typing git and it will come right up. So let's go ahead and open that. Let's navigate to the default SSH folder. And the first command that we are going to run is SSH keygen. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, since I already ran through this exercise a while ago, the file already exists. Uh, by default, when you generate a key, uh, it gives you the ID underscore RSA location for you to store your key. So I'm going to go ahead and just click enter. And it's also telling me that the key, it already exists. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it to yes, to go ahead and overwrite. It, but if this is the first time that you run through this exercise or the first time you generate a, an SSH key, you shouldn't uh, run into this prompt. The next thing it will be asking for is a passphrase. So go ahead and make, which is sort of like a password. So go ahead and make something up, but make sure that you remember. So write it down or just use something that you will be able to remember. Okay. So at this point, an SSH key was already generated. The next thing that we got to do is we want to make sure that the SSH agent is running on your computer. And to do that, we use this command here. Okay, so in this case, the SSH agent in fact is running and it's, it is also given us a PID of 400. The next thing we do is now we need to add this newly generated SSH key into the agent or to the agent. And for that, we simply do SSH add. And this is why you need to remember the passphrase because here is where you need to use it. So at this point is telling me that the key, the, the key that we generated has been added to the agent. Okay, so, so far so good. The next thing we got to do is we have to copy this key into our clipboard and you'll see why in a minute. So I want to copy the contents of the ID RSA pop file into my clipboard. And as you can see, you don't get any type of confirmation. Uh, but if we test this, if we open a notepad and we paste the contents, you'll see that the key is in fact there. Now we have to go to Bitbucket and add this key. In simple terms, what we're doing is that this key is sort of like an ID card for this computer. So we have to tell Bitbucket to allow this computer to communicate with their servers moving forward. And the way to do that is you go to Bitbucket. Let me go ahead and close this. We won't need it anymore. Uh, you go to Bitbucket, you click on your avatar, you go to personal settings, which will bring you to this page here. 
and then you select SSH keys. So here you click on add key and you give it a name for this key or for this computer. In this case, I'm using a demo machine, which will be deleted. It's a virtual machine. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and call it demo machine and paste the key there. I'll go ahead and add it. And right away, you'll be able to see that the, the key has just been added now, but it hasn't been used yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and test. Make sure that we're able to connect to GitHub. The way we do that is SSH and we tell it where to connect. Okay, and now uh, you can see that we have successfully connected. Okay, so the next thing we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and clone our repository using our client that we just downloaded to test that in fact this key is working for you to be able to clone repos. Let's go ahead and get the URL for the repo that we want to clone. I created a demo repo, which you can see here. Uh, so let's go ahead and click clone. Make sure that you have SSH selected and click copy and open smart Git. Okay, now that it's open, let's go ahead and select clone and paste and make sure that you get rid of this part here because this is meant for you to do it in a command prompt but we are not on a command prompt. So let's go ahead and get rid of that command. Okay, let's go ahead and press next. Okay, and as you can see, we have successfully connected because we now have information regarding the branches that live in Bitbucket and master is the only branch that we have for this repository. Let's go ahead and press next. And I usually create a directory uh, on the C drive called repos and I like putting my repositories right below that. So let's go ahead and click finish. Okay, there you have it. We have successfully cloned a repo using our SSH key that we just generated. Uh, there is one thing that I do want to point out. In some cases, and I did get that error on this machine, when you run this command to verify that you are able to connect to Bitbucket, since this was a brand new machine or virtual image that I got, it asked me uh, or it showed me a prompt to make sure that I did want to connect to Bitbucket. And I had to, I had to just simply say that it's okay for me to connect to Bitbucket. So in case you get any issues while you're trying to connect to, to Bitbucket via your, your Git client, make sure that you come back and test that you can actually connect through the Git bash. And that will give you the, uh, the opportunity to correct that issue in case you run into it. Well, so let me do a quick recap. So we installed a Git client. We got a hold of the Git bash command by downloading Git. And then we were also able to clone a repo from Bitbucket. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure that you like and subscribe so you don't miss the notifications when we post new videos. I will also be creating a video where I'm going to show you how to create branches and merge branches using Git. So thank you and catch you in the next one. Yeah, I think it went well. Yeah, you know, it was about time. It's like every time I get the, the prompt for me to put in the password, I put in my password, still can connect to, to Bitbucket. That was a pain in the butt. Well, now I can go back and watch my video to make sure that I know how to do it, that I remember how to generate a public key or SSH key, SSH key. Well, anyway, I'm pretty sure they'll like the next one. That's when we have Johnny Depp. Yeah, I think that's the one with Johnny Depp.